Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about leveling up your three-point perspective game using Photoshop. Now, I'll make a slight preface by saying that what I'm about to show you here can be applied to any digital drawing program. Uh, I'm working on a Mac, and I'm using a program called Hedge Stylus. It's a small application that provides you with perspective tools, among other things, that will allow you to easily draw straight lines. So, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what perspective actually is, uh, specifically three-point perspective. So this is not meant to replace your formal knowledge on perspective, but this is more of like a refresher. So we're going to have a vanishing point on the left, vanishing point one, vanishing point two, and these are going to make up what are what's called the horizon line. And three-point perspective has a third vanishing point. That vanishing point might be up above or it might be down below. So let's consider this for a moment here. I'm just going to move this down. And if we consider the idea that everything that's going to be in our perspective, our three-point perspective, is going to be within this triangle. So how does this work? What are we going to need to do? Well, I'll pick a different color for this. And I'll just start to create some rays. These rays are going to emanate from each of the vanishing points. And I'll just create two rays coming from each vanishing point. They are essentially starting out and just projecting outward. And I'm creating those rays so that they're going to be within this perimeter. I'll create a third ray here for vanishing point three, just so we can have something to talk about. So now we're going to look at where those rays intersect. And what we are going to do is we're going to create a structure. So if I use a darker value for that and come back in with the brush tool, I can see that I have something like this, right? So that is my three point perspective where I have three separate vanishing points. If I have the vanishing point up above, I will have a worm's eye view. In other words, you are a worm looking up at the structure. If I move the vanishing point down, then you get a bird's eye view, as if you were a bird looking down on the structure. And we're going to put this into practice with head stylus so you can see how easy it is to go ahead and create interesting three-point perspective drawings using this tool. And this is not sponsored in any shape, way, or form by the folks at head stylus. I'm just a fan of their product, and I think it's worthwhile to look at. Um, there are other tools like Lazy Nozumi on Windows that offer pretty much the same functionality as Head Stylus. So this is actually something that can work whether you're Mac or Windows. So in, in uh, Head Stylus, I'm going to go to Perspective, and there's um, your one-point perspective, your two-point perspective, and three-point perspective. And I'm going to go ahead and simply choose three-point perspective. And you'll see that it creates three vanishing points. Now, those vanishing points, if I were to zoom out a little bit, this third vanishing point, I can set these vanishing points however I wish. I'm going to just move these two inside. The further apart the vanishing points, the less distortion you have. The closer you bring the vanishing points, and the more distortion you're going to have. And the thing about setting up these vanishing points within Hedge Stylus, if I were to zoom in on my screen, you can see that the vanishing points that Hedge Stylus sets up are independent of whether I zoom in or zoom out. So it's important that when you're working with this particular tool that you pick your level of zoom and stick with it. So I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can see um, what I'm doing. And I'll just actually move these out just to make the drawing a little bit more interesting. And you can put your vanishing points off the page, which is also really, really nice. And I'm just going to move my canvas up above here so I have some room to actually draw. Okay, so those are my three vanishing points. So what I'll do is I will just simply draw rays from each of the vanishing points. So if you draw your rays out, Sometimes you may have to hit undo 
because after all the tool is trying to determine your path and it's simply trying to follow that so I want it to go up a little bit higher like this and I'm just going to create a box these are the two edges of the one side of the box so I'll start off with this particular shape if I drop my opacity you can see that I can formalize that shape and this might be a little bit off here but that's okay and I can go back in I can draw my windows and the tool helps keep all of those things in proper perspective so I can focus on what I'm creating and not have to worry about putting a ruler on top of my drawing tablet, which I think is really neat. So this is not a replacement for understanding what perspective is, but it's just a tool that I think can really help you out if you understand the basics of perspective and you just want to be able to work faster. And so now what I can do is I can add additional buildings, right? So maybe here's a building that's more of like a L shape. And maybe its windows are a little bit bigger. And maybe there's a road And there's another building happening over here. And obviously you can draw different sh types of windows. They don't always have to be, you know, perfectly um, straight. In fact, what I would suggest is if you're gonna do like some rounded windows, you can draw some guidelines for yourself and then you can turn off the tool I'll put a sidewalk in you can turn off the tool to draw your um, rounded windows and you can just activate it, turn it off and I can come back in and draw these as rounded windows. And when I'm ready to go back to lines, I can always turn it back on. The thing is, you just do not want to zoom in and zoom out um, without realizing that you are going to be changing the perspective. Now, if I zoom in and zoom out, the zoom level is pretty much the same. So I suppose if you really had to zoom in and zoom out, you probably could. But as a, as a rule of thumb, uh, I mean, it becomes tricky when you actually move around your canvas because then your vanishing points will totally change. So let's draw a road here. Maybe this is actually a barrier. There's another interstate. Let's draw, let's draw a car. Something like that. Maybe there's a sidewalk over here. And you can have some more buildings. You can see as I get closer to that vanishing point, there's a lot more distortion that happens. That's just going to be the case with uh, this um, arrangement with the vanishing points. And let me just fix this. a little bit weird to me. It 
helps if you draw back towards the vanishing point. So let's just get this guy zooming. Maybe there's a car that's zooming really fast down the road. And so now we have three point perspective from a bird's eye view looking down. So head stylus is a very powerful tool. It can do perspective really well. And it can save you a lot of time as you work. Um, it's good for storyboarding. It's good for quick sketching. And um, I think it's definitely worth your weight in gold. And you can also apply this to if you're doing something that's less epic in scope. For example, if you're drawing vehicles from a three-point perspective, you can apply your head stylus um, three-point perspective guides to draw something that is, um, you know, on a smaller scale. So I hope you found this video to be useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you handle perspective in your digital drawing tools? What issues do you suffer with when you're working on perspective? Do you like drawing in perspective or do you hate drawing in perspective? And does this video somehow help you out? Um, let me know. And if you do like what you see, uh, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe and uh, you know, give me a good old thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And uh, I will see you in the next video.